Cool. Um, is John, are you good to go? For another one yeah, more take? Uh, can you go cool. Quarter to five. <laughs> Welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda, and well, we're not at the 13th floor today. We're at the Kenneth Myers Center in downtown Auckland because we couldn't fit the piano into the studio. 13th floor no, is up. We is tried, a long way to go. We couldn't so, quite get it in. So. <laughs> and I'm here with uh, Kevin Field, who's just released his third solo album. So we're going to talk about the record a little cool. bit, and then hear you guys play some yeah. songs. Yeah. Very, very exciting. So. Um, most of the stuff that we usually do is kind of acoustic folk and mm -hmm. uh, some rock and whatever, some blues, but uh, how would you describe the music that you make? Um, well, it's definitely got a jazz sort of backbone to it, I think, and um, all, of the, all of the musicians are you know, jazz musicians. Right. Um, but I guess the actual, the genre is, I, I like to mix things up a little bit, so I think you know, on this particular album there's acoustic jazz, there's things that are definitely a little bit more funky and groove-based. Um, there's things that are a little bit maybe hinting at maybe Latin jazz. There's even a tune that's hinting at maybe a little bit of disco-ish, you know. All right. So that's that's kind of the vibe. Um, and you you, mm. you switch between the acoustic piano, the grand piano, and the Rhodes, Fender Rhodes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much All most right. of the time. And yeah. uh, the record, which is called the A-List, was mostly recorded in Brooklyn, in New York. It was actually, yeah. I. Um, I'd been talking with Matt Penman, who's a great bass player who lives in New York, who's originally actually from Auckland. Right. And um, I'd actually been talking about, you know, with him for quite a while about doing a project. And, um, you know, these things, they go on for a while. And, you know, I think when, whenever we were both in the same city, we might talk about it. And then we talked about it via email and various other things. And then it all kind of started coming together. And, um, and Matt was really good about sort of, you know, things like, uh, finding the right studio, you know, mm -hmm. obviously wanted to get a good studio that had a really nice piano. So right. uh, we ended up at a place called Brooklyn Recording, which is a great studio with a really nice Steinway piano, um, and uh, and it's a sort of studio which records a lot of jazz, but it actually also records uh, all sorts of music. Right. Um, in fact, actually Keith Richards' new solo album was recorded in that mm -hmm. same studio I saw. Um, and you and Keith didn't jam at all, did you? Uh, we didn't. I didn't see him in the corridor. <laughs> actually, no. He, <laughs> <laughs> he was after me, but um, yeah, yeah, he just couldn't <laughs> find the time. I understand. Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. you know. um, so that was cool, and and also um, you know in terms of actually uh, pinpointing some of the other players who would play on the album, that was right. something that I talked about with Matt as well. Right. So, so who yeah. who have you got on yeah. the record? And and I guess mm. is it a music wise is it a big deal or is it or a difference between recording it here in Auckland and then going overseas and having to mm. to round up musicians from there? Um, well the. Apart from Matt, the two other guys on the recording, the main guys is Nier Felder, who's a great guitarist, um, who's probably one of the busiest guitarists in New York, I think. So in the, in the week that he was recording my album, he was also doing another person's album and also doing several other gigs around town, and, um, but managed to fit it all really well. And he's, um, he's actually records for Sony. He's mm. just got a, um, his debut album out and also plays with um, a band... Um, with uh, Terry Lynn Carrington, which actually won the um, Grammy Award for Best Instrumental Jazz Album last year. Uh, and then a drummer called Abed Calvier, who um, Matt plays with a lot. Mm. And obviously you think about units, you know, I think Matt uh, being a bass player, you know, he he's obviously wants to play with a drummer who's he's comfortable with. But right. also what I the way we actually end up doing the album is, or thinking about the album is I did demos of a lot of the tracks and then I sent them over to Matt and then he sort of had a listen and was able to ah. So he got a sort of a vibe for right. for the type of album that it was gonna be. And then was able to sort of say, Yeah, I think this guy's So he's almost like a co producer of that It kinda of was actually, yeah. It was certainly like a kind of executive producer in a right. way. Yes. Um, I should really give him credit, uh, <laughs> but then I'd have to pay him more money. <laughs> and we know there's so much money to be made, especially in jazz music. I mean, <laughs> yes, totally. Um, but in terms of how would it be different if I'd recorded it here? Um, well, I, I, I think it, w it would be different because obviously the players are different here. But um, but I think it would still, you know, I think I, I would have still been able to make a good album with. Um, with the players in Auckland. I think, it, yeah, it would have been different. Maybe the thing was different with the New York guys is that, you know, that sometimes the change just went in a different direction. Right. And maybe there were different risks that were taken. Right. Um, so I think it was really just, a, it was nice to be in a different environment. Um, you know, it was a, a great studio as well. Um, maybe one of the differences 
I felt with the studio is that you know they're, they're used to recording acoustic music all the time, acoustic jazz, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so you just walk into the studio at you know 11 a.m. in the morning, and the piano is all set up right. with all the mics and sounding beautiful. It's like you don't have to do anything. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, so yeah. um, so maybe there's sort of like a, they're just churning over so many more recordings that, um, particularly recordings that are kind of um, along the lines of, of what, what my album is. Yeah. So that that kind of really helps. So in actual fact, the two days in the studio were really very stress-free and kind nice. of... Nice, that's what you want. You know, we kind of finished early on both days, actually, Whoa. <laughs> which is always nice, <laughs> <laughs> rather than the stress of sort of, right, one more take, one more yeah, take. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, you're going to play a few songs for us yep. from the record uh, here today with different configurations of musicians. Sure. The first one is called Offering. Yes. And so tell me a little bit about the track. And sure. Offering, uh, um, uh, well, funny enough, Offering is the one track that I have actually recorded before, and I actually recorded that track on one of Nathan Haynes' albums. Um, it, was, it was a composition of mine, but I played it to Nathan, and he really liked it, and so we ended up doing it on his album, The Poet's Embrace. But I uh, wanted to re-record it, so I've sort of kind of changed it around, and it's um, become kind of something a little bit different. Um, so it's nice to have two different versions of it. Um, so, and I think it was actually Nathan who coined the title. Oh, very offering. good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And, and who's going to be playing with you on That's going to be with Richie Picard on bass right. and Stephen Thomas on drums. Very good. All right, well, let's give that a listen. We'll hear the three of you uh, get through offering, and then we'll come back and talk some more.
All righty, we're here with Kevin Field, back again after offering. Talk a little bit more about uh, the making of the A-list. And the, this so, is your third record. And is there a progression between one, two, and three? Is there, hmm. for you, um, how, how does it work? Yeah, well, I think there is. I think, um, but usually the way I think of it is when you've made one album, the last thing you want to do is make another album the same as the album right. you just made. Um, and so, but I think you always take stuff from, you know, Previous albums and things, so so yeah, you kind of think, oh well, hey, I'm you know I'm happy or proud of what I've done in the past, but you don't necessarily want to repeat that. So um, so in that sense, I think this album was you know a little bit different. I think this album I was feeling, um, particularly having the influence of maybe the other musicians, the, the New York musicians, was going to be something that made it a little bit more special. And I think that's something you know when I listen to the album, not that. I really, you know, you don't really listen to your own albums all the time. <laughs> you listen to them a hell of a lot when you're making them. Right. <laughs> but once they're made, you kind of, you know, let them, you let let them, them simmer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing I really like is actually the interaction in the band, you know, within the band that I yeah. hear. That's, that's to me the thing that's kind of really the most special. So maybe that's the kind of thing that, um, particularly with this album, that I'm, I'm really kind of drawn to, you mm -hmm. know, is the fact that there's some really nice... Um, Interaction. I think everyone's kind of listening to each other and sort of playing very sympathetically to the to the tracks. Um, you know, I can even remember in the studio when we were recording, uh, when we were mixing the tracks. And so, you know, obviously, you sometimes you just solo various instruments. You know, and um, with one of the tracks, one of the vocal tracks this year, um, I remember we were just listening to the drum track on its own. And um, I, the great thing about it is I, I knew exactly where Obed the drummer was in the song right. just from hearing the drum track. You right. know, just the way that he played, he sort of set up the composition uh, beautifully. You know, So, so that, that was a really great thing with those musicians. Is, right. you know, they're really sort of listening and I think they play very um, compositionally. Yeah. And speaking yeah. compositionally, mm. what about your own songwriting? <coughs> Does that, do, do you go in thinking in terms of I'm going to write an album now and these songs kind of need to fit together mm. or are they songs that you've kind of well, accumulated over a, a set period A little of time? bit of both but actually with this album I mean I think there's 11 tracks on the album and um, uh, probably three or four were already floating around so there were kind of ones that I was like oh yeah I'm going to record this you know record these ones this time they'd sort of maybe been floating around for a couple of years but the rest were pretty much written for this recording, mm -hmm. um, which was great. You know, like it, it was, it was a good discipline in a way because you get kind of a, you're like, right, recording date set. Yeah, it's done. Well, I got to do this now. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no going back. <laughs> so we we need some material. <laughs> you know, so that was kind of um, so really most of the tunes were actually written probably in the six month period prior to, you know, when I actually recorded the album, and uh, and that was good. And I got a chance to play. Most of them, I think, virtually all of them, live. You know, uh, you know, with various people, mainly here in Auckland and around New Zealand. Right. First, which kind of helps as well, helps to kind of bed them in. And sometimes you sort of, you know, when you, of course, when you play a tune with with musicians, you know, it evolves into something else. Or sometimes you, oh yeah, that doesn't work, but this does, and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. So there was that kind of period of time, um, where I guess the tunes were written and then they were sort of bedded in, and then um, went off to New York to record. Cool. Yeah. So the track we're going to hear next is this title track. Yes, the A-list. The A-list. And we've got an, an additional musician. Dixon Nacy. Yeah, who's a great guitarist who um, I sort of, um, he's played a, quite a lot of my tunes actually. You know, he's sort of, um, we've done a lot of guy, live gigs together uh, playing my tunes and also other types of gigs as well. Anything you can tell me about the song? In the A-list, um, I remember, um, well, the funny thing is, I, I had that title, The A-List, and I thought, oh, I really like that title. It's cool. And that was one of the tunes that was already, um, had or I'd already written a little right. bit earlier. And, um, and it was only later on that I actually realized it's The A-List, but it's also in the key of A. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so it was almost like, oh, wow, he's on our side. It was like a little extra, <laughs> kind of little extra bonus uh, synergy there. Right. Um, so, but other than that, it's, it's probably a tune that, um, it sort of probably sounds easier than what it is. It's deceptively hard, oh, <laughs> but, right. it's, but it's got quite a cruisy sort of vibe to it. Ah, you know. That's good to know. All righty, well, let's give it a listen. This is the A-list, Kevin Field and company, and we'll be back for one more. <laughs>
Okay, we're back with Kevin Field, and we've got one more song that you're going to play for us. And uh, before we get to that, though, we want to get an idea of when, where and when people can see you uh, perform some of the music cool. that we're hearing today. Uh, well, we've got a, an album released in a couple of days. We're actually in the same room. That's on August 6th right? Um, in the evening. And then there's also a gig happening at uh, the Creative Jazz Club, which is on August 19th. Um, that'll be with um, the full band that we're hearing today. All right. Well. And is there a pretty wide pool of musicians that you're able to draw from to play in your music? Um, maybe not wide, right? wide, but there's definitely, um, you know, the people who I guess you just gravitate towards who you kind of feel, oh, these people are kind of right mm -hmm. for the for the music. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting, actually, when I when I talked to Matt Penman in New York about the guitarist who would be right for the album, he, he said a really interesting thing, actually, sort of said, because he listened to the music and he was like, yeah, well, this is kind of jazz, but then it's also groove sort mm -hmm. of stuff, you know, and he said, there aren't actually many New York guitarists who can do both. Oh. He actually sort of said, there's a lot of guys who can play great jazz, great lines, but they can't really groove, you know, and vice versa. So... Um, so he thought about it for a while, but then he was like, oh, Nia's the guy who you want, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's really interesting. And I think um, someone like Dixon is also the same like Dixon's um, a great jazz guitarist, and he's released several jazz albums himself. Um, but also, you know, he paid his dues in covers bands right. and sort of um, he's funk feel, bands. He's got to feel the funk. <laughs> yeah, it's so, um, somewhere. so he's kind of very much in the same kind of mold, you know, someone who's kind of like a, a, a crossover kind of musician, you know. Yeah. And to a certain extent, everyone is. I mean, that would be true about Steve and the drama that right. you know, we're hearing today as well. Now, on the, sure. on the last song that we're going to hear, The Perfect Disco, Yes, perfect uh, disco. we have a couple of vocalists. Yeah, so th there's two tunes on the album which are vocal tunes. And um, uh, the way I actually did that is, you know, we recorded guide vocals before I left. And then um, we, so basically in the studio, we actually played along to the vocals. You know, which I thought was important for the recording of the song, you know, that they actually can hear how the song actually goes. Right, that always and, helps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then re recorded the vocal, you know, over the new instrumental track when we got back. Um, so, and I was, I was a little bit nervous about that. Oh, is this going to work or not? Mm -hmm. You know, but it actually it worked great, actually, yeah. you know, for those two tunes. So it was really nice. So, Perfect Disc goes with um, Chloe Chaperone um, on the lead, and then um, the other song, Music of the Gods, is with Marjan Giorgiani on. Um, on the vocal, on the lead for that, they both kind of, right. they're both on both of those tracks. Right. So they're on, on the record and performing today yes, with you they as are well. Actually, yeah. Very good. And anything you need to say about the Perfect Disco before we hear it? Um, perfect Disco, well, that, that was a tune that was floating around for a little while as an instrumental, and then it um, kind of ended up being, I, I think I always knew it would be a vocal tune, actually, right. you know, so it was really just finding the right time and the right person to kind of collaborate with, and it was great working with Chloe because she had some really good ideas about what we do. Um, with the song, maybe you know, maybe just to sort of get it past, get it to the right vibe in every way. Like I think she um, really helped as far as um, I think initially there were too many words, you know, so we just culled it back, oh, and, yeah. you know. So all, all the sort of stuff that you kind of do when, particularly when there's a deadline, you're like, hey, we got to get this done. <laughs> so there's nothing like a deadline to kind of you know make things happen. Make, yeah, absolutely. All righty. Hmm. Okay, well let's uh, wrap up with the perfect disco. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us down to. See where oh, you pleasure. guys uh, hang out and get us out of the MySpace for a little bit. It's, it's good for me as well. And good luck with the with the record and cool. Thanks, any Marty. shows that may be coming up. Cool. Thanks.
you